Brags, I don't like to boast. They like hot butter on the breakfast toast. Watching flicks, talking chicks, I like to mow boat. Can River Man make it your check? Nope. So look at all these movies I got. Commenting like, mmm, should we watch them or not? I know they just be acting for cash. But I still got one question to ask. Like, why do you do that? Do that? Do that? If that was me, I'd be like, screw that, screw that, screw that. I'm an alpha, I'd eat through that. Do that, do that. Mmm, so why'd he do that? Do that, do that. Mm. What's up, everybody? Happy early November. I don't really know what date it is, technically, that you're listening to this, but uh, October's over. That's that's the important thing. Zach and I, coming off of uh, our October blitz, our exploitation, whatever you want to call it, we did the body horror stuff. Uh, we ended with the live stream. Zach posted a really funny uh, short Riverman meme clip, which was really funny, and I didn't see that coming. The fucking memes. The river man's the king of memes. And and it was extra funny for me because I wasn't even present when he said that. So it's like the whole thing was. That's really- why it was so funny. Like everything funny happens when you're gone. Yeah. Maybe you should just leave the show. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I mean, it could be. It could be. Anyway, uh, we thought we'd cleanse the palate a little bit. I'm not sure what we're doing for November. I mean, it'd be kind of fun to do something cool or. I don't know, but Zach wanted, to, I wanted to do something kind of shorter just to kind of cleanse the palate. Zach suggested. This is going to show up late for the Patreons because we're recording this Monday night. So I'm going to try to get this done and we needed something short that we could put up for the Wednesday. Baby. And, but to be fair, though, we doubled up like hardcore last week because we put Cinema Anima out like within a day or two of the podcast. So, I mean, you know, it, it got really stacked last week because of that. I mean, to be honest, I wouldn't even fucking mind if we just did all Ash vs. Evil Dead for all fucking month. I don't give a shit. But um, I could do this whole show. All right. So we're uh, doing Ash vs. Evil Dead. We're doing the pilot. Uh, I know Zach and I have probably talked about this a lot. I actually had Mandela Effect. I, I thought we'd already done a couple of episodes, but I guess we just spoke about it you know, a lot. But um, yeah, I don't know. This would be a fun show to try and tackle to eventually do every episode since it's not too daunting. Oh, yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, I'm on record as thinking that the second season is better than the first season and the third season is just as good as the second season. So it only gets better from here. But uh, anyway, it's on Netflix. That's probably the easiest way for you guys to watch it. I mean, I, if somebody out there has the fucking stars app, you probably have Netflix because who has the stars app? Uh, but all right, we're going to go and get started. Uh, when we queue up here, it's going to have like a stars original logo. And I think it gets right into it. Are we set? Mm hmm. All right. Three, two, one. Groovy. Hell yeah. Stars originals. I got stars channel when I heard this was coming out. See, this was so long in the making. Fuck, we, we heard for years. Like, is there going to be an evil dead four? Is there not going to? Oh, there, there's new, uh, you know, plans for evil dead four just for it to fall through every fucking time. And then finally, but this time it's like, oh yeah, the, they put out that remake and they're like, yeah, we're going to start writing a four. Uh, immediately most people were just like, I don't think it's going to happen. But then, what do you know? They fucking, they had so many ideas that they were like, you know what, we can make a show instead of a movie. And so they made a movie, and on November 11th of 2014, fucking, we, we got the news that Stars uh, gave it the green light, baby. Fucking amazing so, time. Do you think it was all a creative decision to make it a series instead, or do you think it was more business? Like, did they not have faith that a theatrical experience was no longer the place for, for Evil Dead? But it did make a lot of sense because the Evil Dead reboot, as much as I didn't care for it, was a hit for him uh, as far as as a horror movie. Uh, fucking uh, another movie would have probably been the safer choice. They probably, uh, yeah, this, if it's doing it on TV was probably way fucking bigger of an idea at the time. Yeah, I don't know. It's just tough to say. And I don't know if it's because when this show came out and we're still kind of in the middle of it, TV's almost kind of crowned superior than movies right now like the series we're in the age of the series uh, especially streaming shit uh so i don't know if they sorry there's a fucking thing my alarms keep going off i don't know if it was a thing where hey look we're the the tv's even better or if maybe whoever was gonna pick it up was thinking tv's more viable right now and that's safer i don't know i think it works as a series 
Yeah, the, the, apparently the songs in the show were all picked by Sam Raimi uh, for the soundtrack. And they're all from the 70s and 80s, and they were picked uh, by Raimi and Rob Tapper because they believe, like, oh, uh, they have to be songs that Ash listened to back before the first demonic encounter, and therefore, like, that's kind of where he stopped growing. He's like, yeah, he stopped uh, aging pretty much. He's still <laughs> living in that time. So yeah, this is the first time we're seeing our boy after years. And fuck, we we see him. Uh, he's living in a trailer, which uh, I remember when I watched this. They showed like the first five minutes of it uh, before the show premiered, like probably like two or three days. And I watched that first look, and I was like, "Oh man, uh, fucking, it's just it's gonna be like uh, my name is Bruce because that's what my name was Bruce was." It's like uh, they did, basically, yeah. Uh, he's he's living in a trailer. He's working at a new store, and the reason he's not working at Smar is because originally, copyright, yeah, rights, right? Fucking, uh, they gave the Universal barred them from mentioning the movie in the first season, and then after like this around the second season, they were like, "Oh, this is uh, making us a lot of money. Like people are going out and buying the movie again because of the series." So then they were like, "Yeah, you can uh, use uh, you know footage on the show and stuff." Is that really why they agreed to finally though? Apparently, isn't it weird that that kept happening every time? Like, he couldn't use footage from Evil Dead and Evil Dead 2 because of a different fucking studio owning it. So, and that's and that's a good point to bring up. So, it was a little weird at first watching the series because you were kind of like in the dark. Like, wait a second. What, what about this and what about that? And, you know, it doesn't take but a couple of episodes to realize, oh, there must be some kind of dispute with Universal because they put out Army of Darkness. Because this whole first season... And I guess pretty much the main show, they pretty much acknowledge the events of Evil Dead 2, mm-hmm. which obviously was sort of a pseudo remake of the first one. This they is did, the but, first time we're seeing our boy have sex, by the way. I have a question, I, though. I've Wait. always pictured him fucking me, and uh, I never <laughs> thought it would look this great. So I have a question really quick, though. You see, you're right. In season two, they start showing clips of Arya Darkness, uh, but they don't backpedal and, and, and correct the s Mart shit because at that point in the story, he's already, you know, we're not working at the, the what is it called? Stop and save or whatever the fuck it is. I don't remember. It's something. We'll see. And it, it was kind of a shame because uh, s Mart's kind of synonymous with Ash and, and the one liners and stuff like that. But so in this season, at least, if I remember right, they always acknowledge Evil Dead 2. Evil Dead 2. Am I correct? But then in season two or three, there's his sister, like the demon of his sister. But his sister was represented in the first one, right? They, sh- they show Evil Dead 1 and 2 in this. So do they do they make that work? Or is it... I can't remember how it does. Does it make it work that they're, they're blended together? Do they just... Uh, are they just like pretending like Evil Dead 2 events happened, but with the cast of the first one that's how it's supposed to happen chronologically uh and anyway like the, okay. the first of it was they they just couldn't show the original footage this is pretty funny by the way fucking our boy is so fucking dumb he read the book again while he was trying to fucking charm the pants off this chick that he's smoking some doobies with that's that's dank it's it's pure ash that's ash, that's ash from his joint too Fucking, he's just gonna ash that fucking uh, marijuana cig on your forehead. Well, Ash, he's just dank AF. Ash Williams, especially in this series, he's the anti-hero's anti-hero. Like he's not even just a flawed hero. He's a fucking like everything's his fault. Exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, Inked in blood. <laughs> Shit's so cool, baby. Like if you imagine if you show this to a chick, she'd be like, "What, what the fuck?" Eked in blood. Am I going to get AIDS from dealing with this book? Now, what's your thoughts on them rebooting Evil Dead again with new cast, you know, uh, again? And do you think there's going to be any sort of ties to the original movies? Even if it's sort of, uh, you know, is is it, you think it's going to be any sort of universal ties to that, that, that the first movie or it's going to be completely a new thing? Uh, I think we've already seen what happens if you have Evil Dead without Ash. It's just, it's not worth watching. Oh, look what we're seeing here. Oh, hell yes. But... Fucking the Sam Raimi directed this and everything, too. It's a fucking... It's all coming back. The fucking... The demon cam and everything. Yeah, but as far as, uh, you know, the... You know, no Ash in an Evil Dead movie. I, I know we here in Revival House genuinely don't like the movie in, in a general sense, but... I mean, if you look online, a lot of people like that remake. It's it's kind of split. They've got fucking uh, like they they've got a brain that's split. If they like that movie, mm. fucking uh, like it's split. 
and like like they say you only use like a fifty percent of your brain. They're fucking split right in that fifty percent, so they're using half of fifty percent. Well, let's say down the line they did make another legit canon Evil Dead movie with Ash. Would you like to see him somehow acknowledge the series, or do you think it'd probably be wise just to not acknowledge the series because probably time time will have passed and the show will probably have become irrelevant? No, I think this show could be fucking remembered, baby. I think it will be. I think uh, it's uh, one of the better uh, comedy series, especially. Yeah. Oh, I agree. And it's got a great cast. I like the cast. I like Pablo. I like, uh, God, what's the woman's name? I already forgot her name. The girl. Kelly. Kelly. Uh, you know, everybody. And, uh, Lucy Lawless. I haven't seen them working since the show ended. That's too bad. Yeah, that is sad. I mean, I think they were doing a little bit of the con thing, but, you know, obviously there's no cons right now. But, uh, yeah. This might be, this might be where they peak. Unfortunately, well, can, fuck stars. I mean, uh, thank stars for originally doing it, but fuck them for dropping it. They could just they, well, they suck my tit. It's just more incentive for uh, us to produce a Mac and Zach movie to give them some work. Exactly, exactly. They're gonna play Mac and Zach. What would you make Pablo do to get that role? What would you make him do? Fucking just show up. Oh, <laughs> just fucking show up. That's all he's got to do. Would he be Mac or Zach? <laughs> Dude, I don't know. Uh, he kind of looks like, uh, what was fucking Hey Arnold's best friend's name with the afro, the tall flat top? Gerald. He looks like a like a Latino Gerald. Gerald was donk. I'd fuck Gerald. So I don't remember the first season completely, but I know there's highlight episodes for me. And I think episode two is one of the best episodes of the season. That's when um, it's a dank episode. This uh, this right here, this looks a lot like uh, uh, that band. There's a band called Zayo and they have an album called The Fear is What Keeps Us Here. And the album cover looks like this scene. But it's got like snakes around the uh, the figure with the sheet. And I remember like after the show aired, uh, they posted like, holy shit. Fucking, uh, you notice any similarity? It was pretty dark. Pretty dark. Yeah. But, uh, fun fact, this was, like, super excited when this show was coming out. Like, uh, remember, like, it was given approval for a second season, like, three days before it premiered the first season? Yeah. That was donk. But I don't... I don't think I watched either this or the second season until the... I, maybe I didn't watch all... I waited till they were done airing. Beta. I think... I think I did that for all three of them, actually, to be honest. I think I, I think I did. I would just buy the Blu-ray sets when they would drop, like the Halloween after the season had ended. I was watching them a, as soon as they dropped. It's too hard, man. They're only like 30, 40 minutes. It's just, uh, you know, we're spoiled this day and age having content at our disposal. And I can't be made to watch 30 minutes a week anymore. It's, it's easier to watch 30 minutes in little short bursts than all together. You're just making excuses, Aaron. You're just making excuses. It's just tedious and annoying. <laughs> I'd rather you know, it's not enough. Fucking, uh, you know what? what I met I fucking uh, back whenever they finally canceled this show. I met the Bruce at uh, Horror Hound. And like I was so fucking nervous to meet him, like uh, so like I'm like, oh, I don't want to, I don't want to say something stupid. I don't want to say like something everybody's gonna say. So I'm thinking of stuff to say while I'm waiting in line, and like I just drew a blank. And then by the time I walk up to him, I'm like, so no more ash, huh? Fucking, and you know everybody asked him that. You know that's what they all said. Yeah, that was that's some of the bad stuff in the the first season, especially is uh, the CGI. Yeah, it's no good. And so you can tell they got a lot more money pumped into it with season two. Maybe uh, Faith had been restored and whoever was doubting him. Uh, and it just looks so much better. Like from after from season two onward, it feels like Evil Dead 2 levels of gore. I mean, yeah. exactly like this is all just really shitty CGI shit for the most part. And it just doesn't look good. I, I kind of don't like the whole doll thing we're going to see, you know, where there's that living doll. It just looks like shit. Living dolls are cool. But not CGI living dolls. Fuck you. All living dolls are cool. All fucking living dolls matter, Aaron. Fucking asshole. So I can't remember. Um, my fucking uh, Bruce Campbell was one of my little white whales. I almost got him for an interview back in the day. I'm trying to remember what year it would have been. Um, if I don't remember if it would have been in promotion of the, the Evil Dead remake at the time. Or... 
I don't think it would have been for the series because that might have been a little too late. But regardless, you know, uh, he at least emailed me back personally, and I still have the emails and I cherish them. So there's that. Uh, but he he couldn't do anything. He's like, well, you know, right now uh, we're, we're we're wrapping up the last season of Burn Notice. He's like, contractually, I can't do any interviews. Uh, all the interviews I have to do are through burn notice and they have to go through USA's people network. So he says, uh, he's like, maybe contact me after this date. Uh, and then we can work something out. And it just never happened. I never did. Yeah. We, we touched on, or I just touched on it, but like, yeah, whenever this, this, uh, this series was canceled after season three, he announced that he would be retiring Ash. Bullshit. And I, I was skeptical. I was like, yeah, fucking, he, he says that, but like, eh. We we know we know. Then he's then he's like, okay, well I'm I I got thrown some money to do this video game, but it's done. And there's an Evil Dead video game, and people were confused about that and like what? And it was something about like, well, he's in Dead by Daylight. Is that it? No, because supposedly there's an Evil Dead video game. Then the rumors. It's not even rumors. It was confirmed whether or not it fell apart. But uh, it, he was in Mortal Kombat, so it's like uh, clearly. He's willing to pick Ash back up if there's a paycheck involved because literally three different occasions. Granted, it was video game form, but he was still doing the mocaps and the in the voice acting and shit like that. You know what I mean? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, he'll he'll suit up. He'll play Ash, and I I think what they did with this series would work for a movie. Like give him some young blood to work with him. Like it doesn't have to be him. It works. Uh, Apparently, they were originally going to have him still have his metal hand from uh, Army Darkness 2, but they couldn't. Oh, yeah. Hell, yeah. Fucking, he's... he's Didn't even think about that. He's like, uh, what's his name from Happy Gilmore? Fucking Chubbs over here. Chubbs. Okay, so here's a question for you. I don't know if it's just wishful thinking, but what are the odds that the whole retiring Ash thing is just kind of a ruse and we do get some sort of tie-in with Ash in the new movie, whether it's an Easter egg, you know, uh, tie in at the end that teases something or, you know what I mean? Or do you think they wouldn't do that? Because if we could have Ash in the movie, we would put him in the movie because it give us a marketing bump. I would rather them do that. Me too. But I don't really think they need the marketing bump because the, the last Evil Dead movie did well without him. Uh, this is this is really funny. This is funny. How he just pulls like rubber gloves out of nowhere. Yeah, get, really get in there, though. That's fucking dank. <laughs> yeah, well, hold on. So maybe they wouldn't, May, I, it, because we have a different director yet again doing this one, and, and Evil Dead without Sam Raimi, a movie anyway, might feel not pure. Uh, but I think, didn't Sam Raimi always say, even up until after the re, the last remake, that if Bruce will do it, I will do Army of Darkness 2, or Evil Dead 4, whatever you want to call it? Mm-hmm. It's like, like it was Bruce was the holdout, but that does not sound right to me. Like Bruce Campbell seems like anything but a holdout. He does all he'll, he does anything. He's one of those guys. He'll, he will work and do whatever. He's a working actor. Why would he not want to keep dipping back into that? Well, it doesn't make sense that he would be the holdout. You would think I, Sam I Raimi would be, the, you would think Sam Raimi would be the holdout because he's more of a Hollywood guy. Now you think he would want to like push it off. I remember hearing that it, it was hard doing the more physical stuff for this movie. The show, the show. Like he's not because usually he'll do anything, but like yeah, it's usually just like cameo shit. He doesn't have to do much. But yeah, we got that classic car still fucking there. I don't even think it's the original. I think at this point they had to uh, get a different one, same model. Ash listens to cool music. I think he's gonna be listening to like fucking. Sp he listens to a lot of Deep Purple. I think in the season there's a lot of Deep Purple in the soundtrack. I think I think I remember him playing like Space Truck in or, or Into the Outdoor something fucking while he's cruising around. It's pretty cool. Fucking boomer music. I like it. He needs to listen to fucking little Yachty. <laughs> little Peep. Little Peep, exactly. Fucking uh, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang, Gucci Gang. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, I think it's weird that Sam Raimi would um, not be the holdout. But. Exactly. This is funny. He said, you're retarded. And he said, I can safely say that because I have, I know a guy that's retarded. <laughs> That's fucking the genius. <laughs> that's uh, that's Zach logic. So I can say it because I know Aaron. He's retarded. That's not funny. That's mean. <laughs> okay. Why are you the butt of my joke? I'm supposed to be the butt of my joke. Why am I punching up? Punching up at Aaron. 
Gotta punch myself. Dude, who knew fucking Riverman was the most savage of all of us? I fucking, like I said, I die when he fucking said seal. Like, what the fuck? Exactly. That's wrong. It's so funny, too, because, like, it's nonchalant. I didn't, I didn't hear him say it at all. <laughs> like, if I would have heard him say that, I would have been on the floor, like, holy shit. <laughs> Because it was just like out of nowhere, like, did you just pull that out now or did you think about this earlier and you had it re- reserved? Because it was just, because I, I think it, like, the timing was funny, like, who are you supposed to, tell him who you're supposed to be, River Man. There's like a little pause, seal. And I, it was just, it was really funny. And then, of course, you with your, and then your fucking little glasses and cigarette coming down and the fucking putting the seal pictures. Like, goodness, great. Yeah, it's a good thing you put the seal pictures because I don't know if like younger people would know who seal is. But luckily, our demographic is right where we need it to be it's like our age group so they we, don't know. we talked about seal before i'm pretty sure i don't know and did you know that when it snows but yeah pablo he looked like something about him just like as soon as he shows up he fits right in with this universe very something very cartoony about like the way he looks in the show yeah like, you don't just see random people walking around looking like fucking with the with the big pompadour like that anymore we should, though. We should. What's the... He looks like Beavis. What the fuck is the deal with this Evil Dead video game that they've talked about but not really talked about? I don't know. Yeah. There's supposed to be like an open world Evil Dead game, like a big Evil Dead game. Uh, on paper, that sounds amazing, but uh, you, you're almost kind of scared of who they, they get to, to make it because, you know, it just doesn't seem like a property that a big developer is going to touch or, or they fork over money for, you know? Mm-hmm. Hopefully they don't get LJ in. I don't think they're active. Yeah, I'm kind of like uh, jealous of their relationship. They're like, oh, yeah, you're you going to come over and watch Monday Night Raw with me? It's like, fuck yeah. <laughs> fuck yeah like, I, I want to come over with fucking Pablo and watch Monday Night Raw. And fucking Bruce Campbell. Who asked who? Did, did, did Bruce ask Pablo? Pablo, he said, are you going to do it again like they've done it before? Yeah, that's yeah. cool, man. He's a, he's a father figure. Uh, exactly. Kelly, Kelly, in a really weird, uh, non unconventional way, is really hot. Bub. Like you know, not in a conventional way. Not in a like fucking uh, like all these class. Like fucking, you look at porno. She don't look like a Playboy. I meant she doesn't look like she's in Playboy, but she's the girl next door. That yeah. Well, of- I I think it's really. Like, I don't think I thought she was attractive the first time I saw her, but as you get to know her character, I think, I think part of it's attitude and just her, yeah, attitude. Exactly. She's got the attitude. She can't believe what fucking uh, our boy Bruce Campbell's saying to her. He's got some attitude. Fucking asshole over here. But yeah, he's coming on and we're trying to mack on the Kelly. I love this stroke in her face with his (laughs) his fucking fake hand. I, I watched this to to prepare for our commentary last night, and yeah. like by the end of it, I was just like, I just want to keep watching now. Like, yeah, yeah. I I hope I. I but I noticed I, like right there, it looks like he's got like a rubber glove painted brown on. Yeah, that's funny. <laughs> funny how I, that works. Well, I mean, you'd think that might be the easiest way to do it, but uh, mm-hmm. otherwise, you have the Chubbs effect where he's got one arm that's like a foot longer than the other. Yeah, you know, I. I do like that about this show because unlike other series, I kind of just think I can plug it in as time goes on as the fourth movie and rewatch it like I would a movie. I actually thought about it for a while. I was like, man, once this Blu-ray comes out, I might like uh, do a fan edit of like the movie version of Evil Dead Foe. I never did. I wonder if you could do that easily in a series with a series like this. And, you know, what what would you include? You'd include... The most of the first, a lot of the first episode. Yeah, I think you'd have to you'd have to cut out people like this chick right here drinking coffee out completely because there's some characters that kind of have an arc and it ends, you know, prematurely before the series is done. Uh, oh, she would have to be in there because she, uh, her, and the they meet her and Ash at one point, so she'd have to be there, baby. I mean, it would just have to stay focused on the Lucy Lawless and the ball. Shit. This you is know. the introduction to Lucy Lawless. Ball okay. isn't in this until the second season. I love dude. What does he uh did, does Ash always call him balls or ball what does he call him? Ball what I think so, hell yeah. Something and, it's, uh, it's really funny. Lucy Lawless, she's married to Rob Taffert, uh hmm. producer of the original. You ever see that new Blu-ray or 4K version of Evil Dead? Did you know they fucking George Lucas did? 
Uh, I own both the Evil Dead 1 and 2 Blu-ray. Uh, oh, sorry, 4Ks. Yeah, I own them both separately. I haven't watched Evil Dead 1 yet. Uh, what did they do? You can't get the original movie on, like, I don't know if it's just Blu-ray or or if it's just uh, 4K or if it includes Blu-ray. Because, like, they put they took Rob Tappert out of that part where he's in the woods and they're they're driving through. They, like, made it so that you can't see some of the effects that's, like, uh, that stick out or something. Like, they darkened, like, where the moon is in the sky. Mm, why? I don't know. Uh, well, it, they, I, I'm pretty, I'm 100% sure they're combo packs, so they come with the Blu-ray and everything, too. Oh, yeah. And the digital. They actually also, t- I don't know what it is, man. I'm going to stop buying shit when it first comes out, because, you know, they just released or about to release that uh, Steelbook 2-pack of the 4Ks. For mm-hmm. a better price, and it's like, and it's really cool, and it's like, well, I mean, I already bought them separately, so not not really gonna double dip, but it's not the old movie. Don't get it. What's that? Say we want the tapper cut. Damn it. Well, we want the tapper. Once again, it's got like the Blu-rays. I think it's got the Blu-ray. It's like four discs, so you can. And I imagine the Blu-ray is the same as the other Blu-ray release. I've got those too, which those are really good transfers. Anyway, you probably only really need the four Ks if you have those Blu-rays. Uh, same thing for fucking rambo man i bought all of the rambo 4ks last holiday season when they released them all and then this year they got they announced a fucking box set and it's fucking badass looking like all decked out granted it's like twice as much as you would pay if you just bought them out (laughs) individually so you're really paying a lot of money for the packaging but can't bring myself to fucking be that guy anymore man i used to do i used to double dip and triple dip all the time and it's like why the fuck do i do that He's just fucking smashing himself in the face with those. He takes in it for the team. See, that's the only but like it's the lighting that makes the doll look weird when it's yeah, in the CG I, form. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, they should always do the CG CGI at night. Like I like that where it looks like it's just playing with a doll, like a stupid prop. Yeah. That looks terrible. Here's a fun fact. The doll, little Lori, who attacks Ash, is voiced by Bridget Hoffman, a voice actress who also happens to be the model on the poster and the promotional material for the original Evil Dead. Oh, that is dank. That is cool. Man, that's not even good CGI. That looks terrible. That looks like Veggie Tales. See, I I completely, I could just forgive it whenever it's like, it, it, like whenever it was brand new, I was like, fuck this. And now it's just like, oh, it's... It's there. It's gone. It's done. Yeah. Well, I think I can forgive it because I know what's coming in the later seasons. And I I know it's probably due to budget constraints and not creative fucking terrible ideas. But uh, no, I just if it to me, if you have like really bad CGI, it looks bad, right? Well, if you're going to look bad, no matter what, just they should have had a shitty doll with a shitty overdub. That would have been funny and shitty. I don't know. Amazing. See, here's where they gotta bring all the fucking zoomers up to up to snuff. They don't know who the fuck this guy is. They're all fucking like, oh, I'm confused. Who are these people? Fucking betas. So they're gonna reprise scenes from the uh, first two, not the third one, because they can't yet. But that's done. See, I was thinking like, yeah, just from memory. I need to watch the whole series again, but like if I if I was picking things to cut out of like the movie version, it would probably be a lot of that. Remember that episode that's just him tripping, like when he, yeah, when he drinks yeah. the ayahuasca or whatever. Like yeah, it's funny, but like it, like basically you could cut out the stuff that doesn't actually move the story forward like that. See, I wonder if while they shot this, if they were actually projecting it onto those boxes, or if it was like CGI or something, like with a projector. Kind of looks like a projection, doesn't it? Yeah. Two projections. It's weird. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, maybe they'd have to do it like that unless, like, unless they just had, like, green boxes and they just put, like, the box texture on there later and then they could just put whatever they want. See, they're showing what? the uh, the part two girlfriend, but the original's other characters. Wouldn't it be... Was it... for? Oh, sorry. Not gonna ask, for me... I don't remember if it was season two or season three, but whenever they go back to the fucking, oh, when he goes back in the past, right? This, to the evil dead house, the original house. And mm-hmm. they're kind of like recapping all that shit and he's redoing it. That was the biggest like ear to ear smiling, like fanboy thing for me. I thought that was so cool, man. Uh, that and, was and the you, last two episodes of season two. And usually, you know, when they're kind of doing these reprisal series, whatever, and they kind of go back to the old shit, it's it's usually cheap, but they did it so well. 
and it was it was it was fan service that didn't come off as forced. Mm-hmm. Fucking big asshole in the earth. There's a hole in the earth. It's not a, not the good uh, Deftones album. Oh, you beta. Did you ever listen to the the newest Deftones album? The good. There's like more than one good one. It's not the it's not the good. Notice he he got that teeth knocked out and it's still gone. You think they would have just forgot about it right after it happened? But it was the wrong tooth. It's not gone the whole series, is it? No, until he he he's got dentures. He just puts in another pair of dentures later. Ah, uh, but like I think it's a different tooth that he actually held up to the camera. It looked more like uh, one of those very edge of your mouth teeth, the sharp ones. But hell yeah, this is setting up the mom who's dead, and then she just shows up whenever the the earth opens up. Hell yeah, and that's a great episode. Uh, you're cooking shit. Oh yes. I uh I had I I've listened to the new CD one time so far. I haven't been in the mood to listen to music recently. Yeah, I feel like um if you if you listen to all their albums, this one it's almost like Gore was a sidestep because this feels like it completes a a trilogy between Diamond Eyes, Koyo no Ken, and then this one. It literally looks like Gore was just kind of a sidestep and it wasn't but uh I don't think it's quite as good as Diamond Eyes and, and Koyo no Kan. I think it's solid. I like it. But when you, if you were to listen to all of them together in like a shuffle, those three albums, they, the production, everything blends right in. It all sounds like one big album. But when you start listening to shit like, I don't know, you listen to some of the tracks off the new one and I like them, but then Goon Squad will come on or something. It's like, oh, fuck it. It doesn't touch these songs on the last two. Goon Squad. Goon Squad is my shit. That's what we should have called the podcast. Yeah. Yep, she just saw her mom. That would be fucking crazy. And then the Pablo, he's got to come in and fucking save the day. Yeah. I'd let Pablo be right behind me. I thought you said you were going to let Pablo give you a Hummer or something. Oh, be right behind you. Yeah, that's gay too. Exactly. I was trying to think it'd be really cool to be able to do an entire series like this because it's not too daunting, but it, but as like uh, since they're short episodes, I wish we had more time in the day because I would even say like, oh man, it would be cool if we did these as Patreon exclusives because they're like what 30, 40 minutes of time plus a little bit of editing and do them like once a month. But I don't know. Part of me feels bad about doing certain things as exclusives behind like a wall. Unless they were timed, yeah. like eventually they yeah. go for everybody. I asked Mac, I'm like, is this going to be like always a Patreon only thing? Or like after a year, he's just like, no, always. I'm like, I, 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 I don't know. I, I don't know about that. I think uh, after a while, I was thinking about that, too. I'm like, uh, I, I, yeah, I think after a while, maybe it should if she become free game. And that's what I was thinking about this. It's like if I knew that was the case, like, um, you know, we could do these. And then next year we we're like, hey. We can we can start posting these for everybody. I think that'd be cool. I mean, I, I, you know, that's a cool idea to me. Dog. So yeah, this uh fucking uh, this chick, she's like she was a uh, part of the two cops earlier. That uh, yeah, she went. They they checked out the house and the the girl. We talked over, but it was that scene that I was talking about. The album cover looked like from that band and like yeah so she's like did that really happen and shit she came back because she's been seeing uh well we saw in the diner that fucking we don't know yet but i think it was lucy lawless is like making her see shit like she's trying to get her to uh to fucking get involved in this babe that's dog shit see lucy is just uh she's trying to get our boy ash some poon because that's ultimately what she uh she she becomes the love interest of the of the season Mossy Haven. I, I've i never... This is like the Bride of Chucky trailer park. I've never seen a trailer park that looked like this. You know what I mean? I've seen the trailer parks where they're like more manufactured homes. Like they're actual like little neighborhoods. You know, maybe they're like, you know, not super nice or whatever big. But I've never actually seen a trailer park where it's actually the cars that you haul away. Like uh, attached to a hitch. Have you? Like they always show they always show these kind of trailer parks in movies. Not the ones you really see. I don't know. See, now he's got the different teeth. 
How much does a, a pair of those cost? Like, he's got some money. He's got good dental insurance at that fucking uh, S-Mart knockoff. I tricked my brother, Dr. Sleaze, into drinking denture water. Dog. My my grandfather wore dentures from, from a pretty young age, actually. Um, and he left his glass, uh, his dentures on the kitchen counter one day. And then, uh, so they're just laying in a glass of water. And I told my brother it was pink ice. And he's Dog. like, he believed it and he drank it. I'm like, ha ha, clearly those are teeth, you dummy. Dog. What do you do? Did he beat the shit out of you? No, we were both young. I was probably fourth grade and he would have been second grade. So we didn't do shit. I would have held you down and, and fucking jacked off in your face. I would have added some sexual assault to my fucking uh, getting, uh, you know, fucking uh, made a, a bitch of. No one makes a bitch out of me. You know what I'm realizing? I don't know if it's because. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, what? What? <laughs> Just about the time I was coming out of jail. I'd do it again. <laughs> Um, fuck, man. No, I'm realizing that. I'm trying to think. Is it because I don't know why it is? I don't know if it's because of the content we've been doing lately, but I, I don't think we've read comments in a very long time. So I don't know how you want to do that. Do you want to wait till this episode's over to to get? Because there's a lot. Or do you want to? You want me to start kind of threading them in now? Or how do you want to do it? Because I feel bad. We haven't read stuff in a while. Uh, read one of them. All right, so I'm going to read uh, Back in the Day on the Dentist. Adrian Mendoza commented, Great episode. I laughed. I cried. I got hard. It was nice hearing from Riverman again. You can watch Shivers on Tubi. Aaron, how's your back door? Were you in pain when you woke up? Are you sore? There is nothing painful about a long tube being snaked into someone's anus. There is no shame. Riverman is right. Why are you so bashful? How are Riverman's balls doing? I love that, I love that you guys uh, love talking about Bacula. A Quantum Leap commentary would be excellent. Aaron, I teared up when you were discussing your Scott Bakula dream. Uh, fuck yeah, my ass, my asshole's great. It's great. Uh, the worst part was just the anesthetic and coming out of that, and it just—I don't know—it stuck with me for a couple days, made me feel a little sick. But no, man, I, I'm just happy that I have a clean bill of health, man. And I implore everybody to go out there and get your get your asses checked. You know, it could save your life. So glad I did it. He's suiting up, baby. The fucking uh, the boomstick's coming out. He realizes he's oh, that's a nice, that's a nice little contraption he built there. See, uh, he can afford to do that shit, but he's still living in a trailer. Yeah, it's funny. Maybe he just he prefers the trailer. He's like, this is my aesthetic. So to me, it's weird. If if Evil Dead Two is considered the bridge between the horror of evil dead one and the total slapstick of evil dead three. And it, this is like a common, a perfect blend of two and three. Oh yeah. Because it's got the stupid, it's actually slappier stick. If anything, it's sillier, but it's got the gore and it's got more of an aesthetic like two. Um, I, I think they hit it out of the park. I mean, I would have loved a movie like in this style, in this vein. Oh yeah. We got one. We got a five hour long movie. You're thinking inside the box and you gotta get out of this box. We got a five hour long movie. That's better. Hey, Mendoza, <laughs> he posted a pretty, uh, pretty interesting, maybe divisive comment on our brain scan commentary, which I just watched brain scan again. I watched it, uh, for Halloween, the week of Halloween. And I think I agree with, uh, I, I think I agree with him. I know, I know Todd really loves brain scan. Like if you look on letterboxd, this is funny. This is funny. What? This just makes no sense, but it's like just cartoony AF. He opens this. Yeah. <laughs> <He's>, <laughs> yeah. That's that's gross. I don't think I ever noticed that joke though. What? Oh, the tongue? Where she where he's like Vivian. I don't get it either. He recognizes that tongue. Oh they've, <laughs> I didn't they've clearly fucked before. I didn't get it. Gross. Well, she said that thing that comes back in part in the third season. Go ahead though. What did uh what did he say about fucking brain scan? Uh, he was saying the first 40 minutes were good and then the f the film falls apart. It's an okay film. Eddie Furlong was good in the movie and it still had that he still had that T2 shine on him. You guys have been doing Furlong exploitation now for what? The last 5 years and you guys have yet to do T2? That's incredible. Uh you guys are, and I'll I'll we'll get to it. You guys are right. This film is reminiscent uh, of Trick or Treat. I think Trickster has more of a personality than Sammy Kerr though. 
Uh, this film reminded me of Trick or Treat, but also of the underappreciated 90s film Strange Days and the 92 film The Lawnmower Man. Brain Scan, Strange Days, and Lawnmower Man deal with technology, simulations, the use of disks to store information, and the internet. All three films depict the technology as a negative, uh, only bringing death and destruction. I did uh, I did remind him we did do T2. And he's like, oh yeah, you guys totally did do it. So, we did the extended cut, yeah. We did the extended cut. Technically, technically, if we're going to complete furlong exploitation we gotta do deep fake sometime because technically he's kind of there but not he's not in that fucking movie <laughs> who are we fooling dude i've been do- i've been itching to actually watch it because it's on prime i think now and i'm like i kind of want to rewatch it but uh just because it's a movie i don't mind falling asleep to because it's you know i didn't pay for it but uh you know it's i i agree Riverman. if you look on letterboxd he gives brain scan 10 out of 10 I can't, I, I, I'm i super nostalgic for the movie too, but I can't give it a 10 out of 10 because it does kind of. It's a fucking mess. The, fucking. Back, the back half does not live up to the premise, right? Remember how, remember how it ends where it's like, hey, wait, aren't you forgetting something? And then it shows the dog walking around with the fucking foot. The yeah. dog never left with the foot. We're not forgetting something. You already wrapped this up. The dog didn't get the foot. It's like the, the guy that came in and edited the movie didn't watch it all together. Yeah. yeah, we're missing the great ending here. He fucking got the, uh, got that, he, he just, he did a nice toss of a chainsaw to him with his feet. That's dank. What was the quote he just said? Something about Gerald, what did he say? I missed it, because I was talking. Yeah, this is cool. This is a really cool Evil Dead moment. Amazing. <laughs> well, do, do you wish that uh, Sam Raimi would have been there to direct every episode? I don't I know could, because this isn't even the best episode of the series. <laughs> yeah. You know, which which means I wouldn't be against an Evil Dead movie if Sam Raimi didn't direct it as long as it had Ash and everything else. And he was I mean, I don't Sam Raimi, he's always got his hand in it, but that doesn't always mean a win because, you know, him and Bruce and Robert, they were all producing that last one with the, uh, you know, the fucking the Mia. As long as they're all in, in the, the writing room again, I think it'd be good. But this here it is. Oh, nut inducing. Yeah, this makes me want to finish the show too uh, and, and go through it again. And you know, I, I think it's funny because maybe you're right as far as this was more of an undertaking because, I mean, they must have spent a fortune on all the music licensing on this show, right? Because mm-hmm. they, they, they would have got away from that doing that in a movie easily because they never had licensed music in those movies. Oh. I mean, they definitely add something to it. So, But anyway, uh, I, I heard for the longest time, and I don't know if they ever fixed it, but I remember when the, the big thing in the world was releasing classic TV shows on DVD when DVD was all the rage, and everybody was clamoring for Wonder Years. Oh. And the big holdup on Wonder Years was all the licensed music that was on in that show, and they couldn't afford That's to go. That's why you got these days you, when you make a TV series, you gotta put out that Blu-ray home video release right away. Don't wait like fucking decades. Like you're never gonna be able to get all that music again. And I want to say they finally ended up releasing the the series, but I don't know if it was one of those cases where they changed the music. Probably. You know, I think because what other what other shows do they do that for? There's quite a few different shows where. Oh, Married with Children. Married with Children. Oh, for the intro, yeah. I want to say, fuck, Quantum Leap might be that show too. Because there was a there's a couple of episodes like Foreigner they would play. I don't know. There, I know there was another like example I'm forgetting where um, if you were none the wiser, you would have never noticed and it wouldn't have bothered you. But if you knew, you knew. It's like, whoa, this is, these are not the same songs. What the fuck is this? Mm-hmm. But yeah, it's, it's, it's always stupid. But uh, yeah, I, I kind of want to stay on brain scan for a second because I think he's absolutely right and Zach's right too. It is a mess. And my whole thing is the premise is really cool. And you're right comparing it to shit like Lawnmower Man because back in the early and mid 90s, you know, uh, virtual reality and it, it was all the rage. It was just a thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm surprised brain scan doesn't go full 90s Lawnmower Man and have the really shitty money for nothing 3D graphics that they all wanted to inject, you know? Oh yeah. Uh, look at here. Look at here. But it's it's still got that vibe all throughout it. Yeah, it's a mess. I don't know. I love it. I think Riverman likes it so much because we always wanted to have that sort of room. Well, he's Eddie Furlong has it all. His dad's never around. He has an attic bedroom. 
who really ever had an attic bedroom besides these fucking cool ass people we wanted to be in the movies? They always had these really sweet attic bedrooms uh, with just, I don't know, like they're, it's really cool. And, and he had a fridge. He had an oven, I think, and a microwave and a fridge. It's like, does, is his dad ever around? Like he literally just moved upstairs. He said, fuck it. There's no reason to even be downstairs. I'm going to keep a fridge and all this shit up here. It's a mess, but like if you watched it at the right time growing up, you, you, you're never going to like forget about it pretty much if you were into that stuff. And like it, it, you mentioned that it reminds, well, he mentioned it reminds him of Trigger Treat. And you said it, uh, that movie Hack a Lantern that uh, Joe Bob showed on the uh, Halloween night. Uh, I watched that Halloween night and like, yeah, that reminded me a lot of Trigger Treat. I'm dying to watch it. And I saw that you reviewed it. And I'm like, fuck. And I, I, didn't even see the shit that Joe Bob did for Halloween. So I, that might be my next watch. I might watch that tonight. Uh, so I, I, I've never seen it. And if it's anything like those sort of uh, swept under the rug, Halloween classics that make you really feel like Halloween, then I, I have been missing out. I want to check it out. It's, it's definitely good because it's so fucking like wacky and dumb. Uh, yes. Yeah, so don't, don't make your expectations too high, <laughs> but they did a, a similar thing that they did on the Friday the 13th marathon years ago. Where it was like, oh yeah, they're oh well, you'll see when you watch it. It's it's fun, baby. Well, and, but like I said, I totally get where Adrian's coming from with this, and I but I also get where Riverman's coming from. He he's looking through you know nostalgic glasses, right? Because I feel the same way about Trick or Treat. I the hundred percent. I think the ending drops the ball. I mm -hmm. love Trick or Treat. There's a big part of me that would love to give it a ten out of ten because it's just one of those movies for me. But it's not a ten out of ten. It's not because it's. Gr I think trick or treat holds firmer than brain scan. I think it's better than brain scan, but, and it's not even the whole third act that shits the bed with trick or treat. It's just the end. It's just the very end when he's taking out Sammy Kerr and that sort of final thing where he's driving in the car and all that is just like, what the fuck is this? Like literally just rewrite the last five pages of the damn script. I don't know. It really seemed like some kind of a rush job. Like, like somebody didn't like the ending and they told him, Hey, quick change this ending. We don't like it. It's not testing well or, the guy, whoever's paying for it, doesn't like it, and he probably shouldn't have been in, even suggesting it. But when brain with brain scan, they should have added more scenes like that first time he plays the game. We needed more of that. Yeah, like, more. Uh, we we see that, and then like the next time we see, like uh, the next like mission is like off screen. We see the aftermath when he kills Kyle, and then like after that, like it's uh you know like where he's going to get rid of the evidence and stuff. We needed more. I guess it wouldn't even make sense, though, because after he does it once, he's like, I ain't going to fall for that again. So I guess uh, how could they have made that? And it's a missed opportunity because the movie, first of all, I, I got to say, too, um, I feel like the whole weird subplot of the car wreck and his mom and his nightmare is, is undercooked and it's never really capitalized on it. it it should have never been there. Like, really, does it's it really just there to give us a reason to where he's alone at the house by himself? Well, his dad's so like away no on business. No, his, his dad's away on business. Yeah, so his mom's not there either. So, I mean, so like, yeah, that doesn't even make sense that they would just leave a kid by himself and not get a babysitter or something. I mean, they didn't really need to go to all that trouble. They could have just wrote in some other generic reason why his parents were both out of town. <laughs> like, you know, we're visiting my sick mom. Bye. Because it's just a, it's a voicemail. They leave him. That's all we get. It could have been anything. But no, they actually it started. It could have been anything. That's why it was a car wreck. Yeah, but they start the movie off on that. Like he's having the dream and it's all this stuff. And, and even when he wakes up and he does that classic John Connor scream, you think he's going to go, Mom! And it's a lot He had to be in the car wreck because he's, we need reason for him to have a limp so that whenever he's trying to get the, uh, the, the, the foot away from the dog before he runs away, he's uh, limping. Is it not he out of the not get it? Is it not out of the realm of possibility that you can't outrun a dog anyway with two healthy feet? Why does he need a nope. why does he need a limp? What was it like a German shepherd or something? Dude, you're not going to outrun the dog anyway. Like well, you don't need to make a I, I I just feel like they were trying to give him more shit like to be exciting as a character, but I just I I every time I watch Brain Scan, I forget about that. Like, oh yeah. That's a thing. Like and he, you know, he wakes up from his dream and he looks at his leg or whatever it is and he sees the scarring on it. I'm like, "Okay, great. This never goes anywhere." But anyway, I thought it was a missed opportunity because when he wakes up screaming, you think he's going to do the classic mom like he does in Terminator and fucking uh, Pet Cemetery 2. And I'm like, oh, man, this is like his signature. This is his thing. This is his. Uh, he didn't want to get typecast. I mean, it's his. Uh, I don't. What? What you talking about, Willis? But anyway, no, I agree with you. Um, I don't think Riverman would agree with you, Mendoza, but I, I do. 
Uh, what will we see here? I'm going to skip around. There's a lot of exploited cinema comments. So hopefully you guys are reading those next time you uh, do something. Like there's a lot. I just scroll past like seven. Uh, let's see. <sighs> cinema Enema. I'm going to go ahead and we'll hold that. Videodrome. Videodrome. We got uh, Will and Matt's excellent podcast. He says, my we had, I had done a little Van Halen tribute uh, on that episode. So that's where this is relevant. He says, my earliest memory of Van Halen would be when our family was at a circuit city. City. And the gaming section was a Guitar Hero 2 kiosk. While the parents were shopping, us kids were in the gaming section, and I decided to try out Guitar Hero 2. And the song I picked was their cover of You Really Got Me. Playing that song not only solidified my eventual love for rhythm games like Guitar Hero and Rock Band, but also Van Halen. My favorite Roth-era song is Intruder, Oh Pretty Woman. While my favorite Hagar-era song is Dreams, We'll Miss You, Eddie. I need to rewatch Videodrome. I remember renting the VHS uh, from the university's library a couple of years ago and being confused by what was going on. Like Zach said, rewatching it will probably help me better understand what was happening. Also, how could you guys forget Debbie Harry's appearance in the Tales from the Dark Side movie? Um, oh, yes. I don't really remember the Tales from the Dark Side movie that well. That's, that's a movie I watched a couple of times on sci-fi growing up. That was originally going to be Creep Show 3. Yeah, yeah. We've, we've talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I don't know. No, so with the Van Halen thing, you totally look like a guy that would uh, like Oh Pretty Woman. Because I could see you just, you know, wearing uh, Ray-Bans and liking Roy Orbison, Will. Because you're kind of that, you know, you seem like that kind of dude. Uh, Dreams was... It's my favorite Hagar. It's Dreams is probably my favorite Van Halen song, just period, because it was my first. The best song is the fucking song at the end of the fucking Power Rangers movie. That's Dreams. Well, then you guys are correct for once, Betas. Well, so that's the greatest song of all the Van Halen songs, because it was my, I don't want to say it was my first introduction to Van Halen, because, you know, growing up, classic rock radio was always being played. I've, of course, of course I heard fucking, you know, I'm the one and fucking pretty woman i heard all those fucking roth era hits of course but it wasn't until uh 1995 or whatever when i brought home that vhs of power rangers my dad bought it for me and i because i never got to go to the movies really and i yeah the end i couldn't wait to see that fucking movie so by association i loved it then all of a sudden they're playing dreams and at this point i had heard the name van halen probably because i was like in the fourth grade but i didn't really know like that there was ever a Van Hagar, et cetera. I didn't, my knowledge wasn't that vast. I just heard this fucking sweet ass song and I heard this fucking awesome chorus. And then that little tapping that solo at the end. Uh, and it was so fucking cool. And the keyboards, man. And I always saw on the credits on the soundtrack that, you know, Van Halen dreams. And so I always wanted that album. And I, I went out and bought it with like some allowance money or something just a couple years later. So uh, that was my first Van Halen record too. So yeah, it is the best. It's a great fucking song. Uh, but yeah, for sure. Uh, and I would, I wouldn't doubt that they gave that song to the movie because I don't know. I feel like Eddie Van Halen's son Wolfgang was probably huge into the Power Rangers or something because he was probably right at the right age. Um, Dog. all right, that's more cinema anima shit. We got to catch up on those when we do another one. All right, what do we got here? Fuck me. Um, oh, sorry. There's more uh, Videodrome. Bloodless RBC. He says MK Ultra, the CIA's top secret program in human experimentation and behavior. Uh, I believe that was the inspiration for this film. If you don't know anything, uh, I highly recommend you do some research who this government program is. The CIA would not would brainwash people to do their dirty work and commit assassination on their political rivals. RFK's assassination was supposedly a part of that program, along with the Unabomber. After public exposure, they supposedly put a lid on it. The only difference between the movie and the real life government program is that the movie used media to brainwash while the CIA would dose their unknowingly participants, unknowing participants with LSD and other unknown substances on a regular basis to get full mind control over their subject. Our government is cucks. I, I had to watch this a few times to fully grasp what was going on. A very well made movie. And I love that cancer gun death to Videodrome. Long live the new flesh. And he says here, he gives it 8.5 out of 10. Did you know uh, the government sent Martin Luther King uh, letters and telling him to go kill himself, try to get him to kill himself. No. What is this validated? Is this verified by somebody? Apparently the CIA, I think. Oh, they admitted to it. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah. uh, is it on their official Instagram? Or something. All right. Adrian Mendoza, he also said there was a Criterion flash sale last night. Uh, all titles were 50% off. By the time I got uh, to the site, Videodrome was sold out. That sucks. That's beta cock shit. I hate it when I miss a sale, man. 
I hate it when I got my eyes on something and I go to finally buy it. Like maybe I left it in my cart or I needed a day or two and then it's not on sale anymore. And out of spite, I'm like, I can't, I can't, I can't pay more for this knowing I could have had it for less yesterday. I can't. Amazing. I'm like that. All right. So uh, not going to do that. More comments, comments. All right. Tons of video drum shit. Uh, Mendoza also followed up. Great commentary. It's always good hearing from Riverman. I loved your Van Halen eulogy. I forgot the ups and downs of that influential band. I miss Miss Cleo too. Your lucky bro, your lucky brother seeing you with your sock on. He's talking about my tube sock, fucking jerk oh, off yeah. sock. Uh, were there mystery stains on that couch, Aaron? What did the couch smell like, Aaron? I'm sorry for my flippant PC comment. I really did like fanat the fanatic commentary, and I really did like Zach dropping the R word. Interesting. So he, oh, yeah, yeah, he's he's he, so he's glad he means dropped it as far as you didn't say it, or dropping it as far as you say saying it. What dropping means two different things, like dropping it like you got rid of it or dropping it as in you dropped the bomb, you dropped the R bomb. Mm -hmm. I don't know which one he means. He means dropping it. He means that I like, said it because I, I don't think uh, I, I censored it in that version. In that, in OK. That episode. All right. Well, he says we have quick trips in Texas, but no circle K's. There's nothing to be ashamed about uh, loving a sweaty, plump hot dog ready to burst in your mouth, Aaron. All right. Oh, yeah. Well, now that I'm validated by you, hey, Mendoza, I I will no longer feel any shame. Um, Maxwell Unash, he says, if you like James Woods, you should check out, he has a couple of suggestions, Cop, Salvador, Once Upon a Time in America. Vampires, while not great, is a fun film. 90s Carpenter was better than 70s Carpenter, in my opinion. What? Okay. That's, that's well, I, I guess I guess Carpenter really peaked in the 80s for a lot of people, technically, because in the 70s, you know what? We had Halloween. We had Assault. I guess most of his catalog was the 80s, right? So, all right. Well, I'll we'll, we'll still keep this going. He said Vampire. Well, he goes uh, Assault on Precinct 13 had a great concept, but was a run of the mill exploitation flick. And the first Halloween movie pales in comparison to other proto slasher flicks like Black Christmas, Peeping Tom and The Town That Dreaded Sundown. Well, I mean, I respect your opinion. And since you did say 70s, which, you know, doesn't include all the, the 80s classics he had. I mean, I'll just let that slide. Um, I can I can kind of understand. I don't I don't dog people that see Halloween today for the first time and, and say they don't really care for it. Like, I, I kind of understand. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I, I part of me wants to say you're crazy because I get all what makes it so great. But I, but looking through their eyes, it's really slow. Mm -hmm. And if you're somebody that hasn't watched a lot of movies from back then and you're more accustomed to movies of the last 20, even 30 years, it's not it's probably a totally different speed for you. You know what I mean? I and I said this on the stream. I think I went and saw Halloween 78 at the theater um, on Halloween Day because uh, I did that a few years ago, too. And I watched it with the lady and she had never seen it. And I was just I, I can't help it. If I'm watching a movie for the first time with somebody else that I've seen a million times and they're new to it. I, I can't help but like drift my eyes to them just to kind of see how they're taking it in. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. what is this person as somebody watching it for the first time? So, and I couldn't, I, I'm trying to like put myself in their perspective and I'm like looking at the movie objectively. I'm like, you know what? This movie's really fucking slow. I wonder what they think about it. Like, and that's the first, and I'm, and as soon as, and as soon as we're done watching it, I'm like, so what'd you think of it? Did you think it was, it was, it was a good, you know, I'm trying to, pro I, I want them to say, I, I'm curious if they're going to be like, it was slow or they liked it, you know, because, I'm making those predictions already. So, but I, it makes me wonder if I had never seen Halloween 78 at, when I was a little fucking kid, if I would not like it so much today, you know what I mean? Am I making sense? Mm -hmm. I don't, what's your opinion on that whole thing? Uh, I, I always did think uh, Halloween was a, a little slow, but yeah, I, I like it. Uh, I just gotta be in the right mood to watch it. And there's part of me that maybe this is sacrilege too. There's part of me that sometimes after I watch Halloween one, I part of me is like, you know what? I, I I'm kind of ashamed to say it, but maybe I enjoy. I'm not saying it's the better movie necessarily, but maybe I enjoy Halloween two more. I think part two is just as slow. You think Halloween two is just as slow? Yeah, kind of. I don't feel like it's as slow. I think it's got a little bit more going on for it. Uh, but I don't know. It's just one of those things. Maybe it's getting older and looking at things differently. Uh, but anyway, that was uh, thank you for that comment, Maxwell. Next up, sleep, Sleepaway Camp 2, Unhappy Campers. I can see a lot of you guys are going back in the archives, man. Sam Lombardo, he says, 
I wrote a sleepaway camp sequel uh, where Angela spares Molly and brainwashes her into becoming a killer like her. And instead of going after a teenage camp, Molly goes after a company retreat full of awful parents. It would make sense since we see in part three that she's still vulnerable towards goody goody girls like Molly and the redhead. When I was a kid, I wrote a, a fanfic a sequel script a Nightmare on Elm Street movie when I was in fourth grade. Mm-hmm. And uh, I, I remember a little bit of it. And I remember I didn't finish it because I don't know. I'm one of those people that when I, if I feel like I'm dabbling in anything sort of bad juju, like it brings bad juju onto you. And I remember when I was writing that I was having a lot of bad dreams. (laughs) What a beta. Well, no, I like, it was making me feel off. It made me feel, well, I mean, you know, I was a little bit more goody goody when I was a kid. I was a little bit more afraid of things like, uh, you know, now, now it wouldn't bother me at all, but yeah, I started having a lot of bad dreams and it just, I felt like, uh, when I was writing it, there was shit in my room, like bad presence and, and I didn't finish it, but, uh, you burned the yeah. sage. No, I didn't burn the sage, but now I'm not shitting you, man. I'm telling you, did I tell you in that haunted episode we did that one time about my karaoke machine that played, I was playing with not plugged in, no mm-hmm. batteries. It wasn't plugged in. That was during that time when I was writing that little fan fix Freddy movie. Oh yeah. So, and I didn't know if it's like, I know it sounds stupid because that would never be how I would be today if I was writing something. But I feel like in your mind, if you're well, you can welcome something into your, your presence, your home, it, even in, even in your mind, like I could, I could easily write the most demonic fucking script in the world. But if I'm just like not taking it seriously and it's just all bullshit, nothing. But if I'm invested into it and I'm like, and it's, it's, and I'm making my mind go to those places and I'm thinking about certain things. I don't know, man, maybe that's. Maybe that is like inviting. I don't know. But all I know is I was a, stu- a stupid kid. That, that's called making yourself paranoid is what it's called. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Maybe it could have been that too. But I wasn't paranoid about that, dude. I'm telling you, my fucking, fucking karaoke machine unplugged started playing the Ghostbusters 2 theme by Run DMC. And I'm like, what? Or no, it's Dougie Fresh Spirit. What the fuck? But yeah. anyway. Can't have batteries in there? No, there's no batteries. <laughs> it, was, it was unplugged. Uh Anyway, uh, let's see. Adrian Mendoza on. Uh, doo, 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 doo. Oh, wow. We got a lot of stream comments after the fact. Uh, one of our part three RE4 October stream. Uh, Mendoza said, Aaron, you look so frustrated, annoyed and tired. I'm sorry that you guys had problems with the live stream. I'm glad you liked Invasion of the Body Snatcher 78. It's great as a double feature with a thing. Uh, it was my first time watching a nightmare on Elm Street. Wow. I really oh, enjoyed yeah. it. He says. I understand why this film became so successful. Uh, yeah, me too. I, I went back and I tried, you know, well, I tried watching Night on Elm Street with the lady and she was too scared. She literally didn't like it. Did you call her beta? Yeah, I did. Uh, but I, Night on Elm Street isn't like Halloween. I think Night on Elm Street moves really well and it's got a lot of really cool imagery to keep even the most casual of viewer like engaged, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, so I think that one lives up. Did she, did, what'd she say when he said, hey, he becomes funny later? <laughs> oh, no, I, I should have been like, well, maybe we should have started with part three. Exactly. You know? Uh, he also said, by the way, I disagree with everything you were saying about taxes and minimum wage. Yeah, we got we we let it slip and got a little political on that one, and we tried to just move off the topic. But uh, oh, yeah. I, think, I think technically Zach made the first move. He made some comment, and then it just triggered. I fucking, the, I, I know the buttons to push. Yeah, he does. All right, uh, James L., who for, we're going to call him James L., formerly known as Oliver Closeoff. That, that is James L. He says, that was a fun stream. We now know that Adrian is a communist and a Marxist. Just kidding. We still love you. See, that's why, that's why we don't want to talk about p- politics. He's a communist. Yeah, he's a communist. We're all communists. We're all communists. So um, anyway, it's all love. I don't give a shit what people fucking endorse or believe. I don't, I don't give a fuck. I can't wait for this election to be over, which as of this recording, I think it's tomorrow. So it's, you know, whatever. Done. Whatever, whatever will be, will be. It's fine. And in four years, regardless, it'll change. We'll have somebody new, right? And even if like a Donald J. Trump is reelected again for a second, I guarantee you the next president in four years will be a Democrat and the tides will shift again. It seems like history, it's all about balance. You know, like no one party. Or, I mean, if you're against the two party system, then I guess you're shit out of luck because it's always just shitty like that. But, you know, if you're one or the other, it never stays dominant forever. It's like every handful of years it shifts. So, mm-hmm. but whatever. Uh, do, 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 do. That's Mac and Zach shit. Um, 
Oh, what? Uh, oh, incoming. Oh, I, I made a post about, um, I made a post about that we had an upcoming cinema enema and we were talking about, um, what was the new cinema enema? Six cents. Mm-hmm. And I, I teased it. And then, uh, Joshua Marjonin, I don't think I've seen you comment. He commented saying, that's my favorite movie. So don't shit on it, Zach. Why would I shit on it? Yeah, it was Zach's pick. Talk about how I like it. Zach, Zach loves that movie, man. Uh, and by the way, thanks for commenting, man. I don't think I've seen you comment on our actual shows. So uh, that just tells us there's a lot of people that listen that don't comment, you know? Mm-hmm. So, but yeah, let your voices be heard. And we're hopefully liked it and you ended up listening to the episode. But no, we, we both, uh, Zach likes it. I didn't hate the movie. You know, I, I liked it. I gave it credit where it was due. Uh, let's see more cinema anima stuff I shall hold off on uh some fucking uh patreon exclusive video comments that uh i will leave for patreon uh sh- tons of exploited comments man you guys got to get on this that's uh, give the people uh love but from beyond commentary james l formerly known as oliver close off i have decided to drop my troll name of oliver close off he says and start using my real name except for my last name because of a certain individual who will go unnamed would use it in a sexual way Hell so yeah. his name here is James L. Do you think his name is long? Like, would you call him long dick duck, long dong silver? What, what do you think it is? Oh, yes. Maybe he's related to Justin long. Is his name liquor? What's his name? I don't know. I don't I bet lengthy. it's long. Lengthy. Let me see. Oh, lengthy. it looks like David Capper jumped in on that conversation. and He was guessing too. Hold on. I, uh, cause I, I think I was guessing it. And cause I, I said, thanks for clarifying, uh, that it was you, man. And I said, I've got a good idea what your last name is then. And he just liked the comment. So maybe I got it right. I don't know. But David Capper jumped in. Capper jumped in and said, Bravo, sir. We all like the old moniker, but switching to your real name is always good. But keep the last name for privacy is a good for for privacy is a good idea. Keeping the last name, you know, hidden. He says, that being said, I have to wonder what the suggestive surname might be. My top guesses are James Lich Tum. What? James Lich Tomachikov. I don't fuck. Oh yeah, <laughs> I can't read these, bro. Longa Nunkunt. James loves on mil- Oh, I get it. They're stupid. Like, uh, I get it. Like James loves on milfs. Loves only milfs and shit. Okay. Dog. Yeah, I I bet it's long. Lengthy. I mean, Riverman's got the bet. Riverman's basically been long fellow. Yeah, long fellow. I wish I had a Riverman. Riverman's just been Riverman since day one. I dox him and call him Todd like half the time, but. You know, exactly. Anyway, thank you so much, James. Uh, I'll stop calling you all over close off. I just want to establish that that's you, you know, uh, right. more exploited comments, more exploited comments uh, from beyond. I know people love reanimator, but from beyond is my jam. I find the metaphysical stuff more interesting than reanimators, reanimation hijinks, although I still like reanimator. Plus, who doesn't love Barbara Crampton dolled up in lace and leather? Dog. Yeah, I mean, I, I. I feel what you're saying, but uh, I, I like Reanimator quite a bit more personally. Uh, let's see. David Capper says, dudes, I have to see this movie now. I listened to it while doing some guitar repairs, but it sounds rad. Uh, I'm surprised you haven't seen it, David Capper. He says, Aaron, real talk. It's actually super cool that you got that colon look around done and sharing your experience because it's really important people do that stuff. So if it encourages peeps to check out their own rears, that's really cool. And now, drum roll, he says, the world's first game of btm against humanity rules are simple fill in the blanks of aaron and zach's best catchphrases with suggestive suggested words and ideas number one would you 90s pop song reference her single name singer Hmm. so let me see what 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 could what could we do there would you share her uh do you believe in life after love (laughs) well the pop song comes first like would you uh would you turn back time her her shit exactly. <laughs> uh let me see he says number two here's the thing with that i went oh here's the thing with that i went uh parentheses sexual position on uh parentheses member of a boy band so everyone at the <laughs> fast food place parentheses was looking at me what okay here's the thing that it's like i went doggy style on Justin Timberlake, so everyone at the Arby's was looking at me. Okay, I get it. I get Hell it. Oh yeah, that would be amazing. He says number three, especially when my parentheses presidential candidate is still in his pre- <laughs> religious building. Donk. 
Wait, wait. So that would be amazing, uh, especially when my Joe Biden <laughs> is still in his mosque. I don't get, okay. Oh, yeah. Uh, OG, he says number four, OG's man. That is absolutely, parentheses, emotional response to divorce papers. Man, I don't know. I'd have to, parentheses, locker room verb, maybe. What? Okay. I, I got to try this one. All right. Uh, there's one more after this. OG's oh, man. That is absolutely, damn it. Ah! Man, I don't know. I'd have to suck her dick, maybe. I don't know. That one's tough. And last one, he says, number five. Beta, Aaron can't handle the parentheses, Limp Biscuits member or song, in his parentheses, women's undergarment. That's what that is. Okay, so oh, yeah. Beta, Aaron can't handle the hot dog flavor water in his panties. Exactly. <laughs> that's what it is. Have fun. No, that was fun, man. Uh, that's really funny. Uh, I was talking about Limp Biscuit with my buddy Randall. We were like on the phone and we were reminiscing about like all this new metal. He's like, I still listen to that bullshit because he's all true and he listens to a lot of he's like Pat. He listens to just the most extreme shit, a lot of real underground hardcore music. But he doesn't denounce all the shit he grew up on in middle school. And he's like, man, I still fucking have all the CDs. I love really shitty old bands like guys uh, like I have no shame. And he, he kind of agrees with me where he's like, I, there's nothing. It's nothing wrong with liking stupid music. It's like, it's mm -hmm. fucking fun. He's like, and I, we were talking about Limp Bizkit and I was like, yeah, man. He's like, I mean, I'll fight anybody that says I significant other doesn't sound amazing. Yeah. I, I still think significant other sounds really fucking good. Like sonically. I love the way it sounds. Um, I said, you know, they fell off after I said, hot dog flavor water wasn't as good, but it had its moments, I guess. And then they fell off after that. He's like, oh man, I, I liked him even after that. And he liked the results may vary. I'm like, okay, well you're on an Island then results may vary is better than hot dog flavored water. Do you think it is? Yes. Okay. I've never really given it a full appreciation. Listen, then uh, I remember listening to the truth part one just for fun. And it's just a rip uh, rage against the machine rip off. Like he's trying mm -hmm. to be Zach De La Roca the whole time. Exactly. All right. Uh, <laughs> we're going to try and speed through this uh, cinema anima shit. Uh, lots of fucking exploited. Uh, okay. And we brought this up on the live stream, but I'm going to bring it up again because we really need to get on it. From Beyond, Adrian Mendoza says, have you guys tried Google Podcasts? Google Music is now gone and all podcasts are being moved to Google Podcasts. I've noticed Revival House was not getting up, has not updated their podcasts on Google since Bill and Ted faced the music commentary. I've uh, been listening to you guys via YouTube only, probably because of that. I think he said he used to listen to us on Google. Uh, I'm happy you guys are getting to 5,000 subs. So we brought it up in the live stream, but uh, it sounds like they're switching over and it's there's like a migration going on. Mm -hmm. right and for some reason there was a snag because it's all going to be done through talk shoe it's not like we we don't actually update update each one of these apps so it's actually easy for us to not realize shit's going on with one of them because we don't listen to all we don't listen to ourselves on every app so uh we we were thankful that people like you adrian let us know when there's some kind of blip but that's what it sounds like it sounds like there was some kind of migration blip and they just stopped putting our sh moving our shows over after bill and ted so oh, i don't know what we yeah, have to yeah yeah i don't know if we we just need to update something or but I don't know what we need to update because it sounds like it, it was getting migrated over. So I don't know where the fix would be, but we'll, we'll, we'll get it figured out and we'll get it fixed. Uh, I haven't heard anything back from talk shoe. I need to message him. Uh, that whole fucking conversation I was having with them was really, really kind of odd and um, vague on the future. So maybe one of these days, what would happen if we had to switch to a new hosting? What would happen to all our old shows? Um, yeah, Assuming uh, talk shoes still exist, uh, they'd still be there unless we got rid of them, took them off. And we could just download everything if we had to and go through that painful process. Mm hmm. And just, okay. Uh, yeah. And so, so that means we would have to like technically re upload all our own shows because they wouldn't be out there anymore if like we, we got off talk shoe. Or were they still, are you saying they'd still be on talk shoe? Um, if we took them off, they wouldn't be. I mean, I'm just saying, who knows if they go defunct? You know, mm -hmm. I don't know. Part of me thinks we need to make sure we have backups. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. in case. Uh, and just kind of think of think of the future. So, uh, okay. And do, 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 do. James L. Rest in peace, Sean Connery on the six. Oh, sorry. Fire. I'm jumping ahead, man. Cinema Enema. I'm not going to read that. Uh, from Beyond, Maxwell Nosh. He says, uh, for the month of November or December, I suggest a holiday horror exploitation month dedicated towards horror films centered around a particular holiday not typically associated with horror. Uh, this would exclude Halloween and Christmas. His suggestions are Valentine's Day, My Bloody Valentine, New Year's, New Year's Evil, 
April Fool's, April Fool's Day, and Mother's Day, Mother's Day. I th- I think most of those have come up at some point or another that we should do them. Um, I think that'd be cool to do just a. I think there's usually like an effort to try and do these weird, obscure holiday movies on the actual holiday, but I don't think we ever successfully do it. Maybe Mac and Zach have. I don't know. Oh, yeah. But I'd be down 100%. We got to figure some cool shit out for Christmas. Uh, and we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, actually, I'll just wrap it up with a couple comments on that new Riverman meme machine video you posted, which is really funny. Uh, Adrian Mendoza simply goes, excellent. And Flea Bit Peanut Monkey. I don't know who that is. That's the guy that was saying random shit. On the live stream, he says, party time. I think he's just piggybacking <laughs> off Adrian. And uh, James L. says, I thought Riverman went blackface. Oh, yes. <laughs> I guess he kind of looks like it's blackface. But anyway, thank you guys so much for the comments. And uh, yeah, we'll think about what we're going to do going into November. If we're going to do something special, if we'll, we're just going to keep it random or if we'll do more episodes like this. But uh, I know you guys really are a fan of the Tales from the Crypt episodes we do. So let us know what you think about the Evil Dead. If you want more Evil Dead, Ash vs. Evil Dead, let us know. If you want some Tales from the Crypt, let us know. I think these are really fun to do, so I'm never going to bitch about it. But do you have anything else you want to add? Be excellent to each other. All right. And I keep telling myself I'm going to start hammering this shit home at the start of the episode, but I'm not used to it. But I'm going to say it here. Uh, make sure you guys are liking the video. If you guys are watching the video right now, just take two seconds, turn your eyeballs to the right or left or whatever, and just hit the like button because that's going to help us out a lot. It's the best way to show support. Uh, the more likes, the more interaction we have, the more hits our videos get, the more hits we get, the more subscribers we get, and so on and so forth. So that stuff really does mean something. Uh, unfortunately, that's the way the algorithms work. And uh, if you guys aren't already subscribed and you guys are new, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Uh, likewise, if you guys are on podcast services listening to us right now, please drop uh, five star ratings or review if you feel so inclined. It's the same principles as the YouTube bullshit. All that stuff, the interaction helps us gain more noticeability in places like Apple Podcasts and Google and Spotify and Stitcher. We're on all those uh, platforms. Uh, if you want to support us any further than that, we have a Patreon uh, where you get uh, contents three days early for the most part uh, on our shows and as well as some exclusive content. Mac and Zach started doing exclusive uh, commentaries that are only for Patreon. Uh, Riverman has started posting uh, vlog videos, pickup videos and stuff on there. There's a couple up there right now. Um, I've got a video up there. I'll probably post something here soon too as well. So a lot of extra content uh, beefed up over there. So check out the links where we have Patreon listed and uh, think about, you know, supporting us. You can get in at uh, just two bucks. That's like less than a cup of coffee, less than a cup of basic bitch coffee. And also uh, we're trying, we're trying to figure out a way. I think we're, I mean, are you down with the discord idea? The private discord seems to be what people like to do. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I need to like look at it myself and I know Riverman wants to do it, but I can't just wait. I'm going to look at it too. I think it should be pretty simple, but yeah, we want to do a private discord. It's pretty cool. Uh, because I mean, we, we almost have a community here as it is. And somebody left a really cool comment. I don't, maybe I missed it or I glossed over it, but somebody was talking about that. Somebody was saying in the comments, it was one of the usual suspects. I feel like there's 20 to 30 of you guys that are always commenting, which I love to me. That's like a core community. And I know there's a lot of you guys that aren't commenting that just listen every week. And we love you guys too, but, uh, it does. They, they were like, you know what? These comment sections, they said it, uh, really feels like a, f- a family sometimes and a community it is so that's why a discord re- really cool where you know people that are on patreon or whatever can have access to that and we can always be in a constant communication and thread and host maybe private watch parties or streams you know if we feel so inclined and stuff like that it could be cool you know nice possibilities and uh last but not least teespring we are on there if you guys want to support us even further and get some tangible swag in the process we got shirts and shit like that um for every every show, you know, Mac and Zach save the world. Uh, those are check that out. Uh, Cinema Enema, BTM, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, yeah, they always throw us back a nice percentage too. Um, and that I believe is it. But last thing I'll say, and then we're done. If you are new to Revival House, we host a lot of podcasts coming out every single week. Check us out. Dig through, dig through the fucking vaults. We've got Exploited Cinema on here. Uh, those, those post every other week. That's an exploitation podcast. They're OGs. We got classic BTM. We got BTM commentaries, Mac and Zach save the world. 
Uh, we've got uh, the Game Slice. That's uh, William Lowry's podcast. I think he's just doing once a month right now. Uh, and then we got other playful fucking videos. We got tons of content. So just check it out. You might like all of it. You might like some of it, but there's something for everybody. Okay. Well, that's all we got. Bye bye, puppets. Bye. Into the week at the revival house. Next month's theme, you gotta figure it out. Italian zombies of Holly Shore. I slash it with the knife and the girl next door. And one second in, get it all queued up and ready to hit play in three, two, one. Bye bye, puppets. Zach Pete in a solo cup band. Goodness, cameras love and Josh and Scott failed and Riverman's bay. Bye bye, puppets. Sounds good, like this country used to.